I am live. You are, if you are logging in right now, please know that you can fast forward a couple minutes in this. Um, is what I am doing at the moment is posting the link onto our website. And it usually takes a minute for people to load in. And once they're loaded in, then we'll start playing the music. Uh, today, we are working on a Francisco Terrega piece, pretty famous piece, called Estudio in E Minor. I'm going to highlight this piece of sentence here, and then I have to do command, command V, and then I'm going to get my guitar out of the way because I can't. Apple, you have to be able to use both hands to do everything. Uh, I'm going to link. Enter, edit, settings, open a new window, update, update. Let me wait for it to update. Um, anyway, Francisco Trego's a Studio in E minor, very famous piece. I got a nice uh, arrangement of it uh, for you to download from the website, denverguitarorchestra.com. It is... I think arranged exactly the way uh, Francisco would have wanted it arranged. Uh, you tabs, chords, standard notation, harmonics, both repeats. Sh should be a lovely, it's a lovely tune, lovely opportunity to play something exciting. Today is Monday, and we do, on Mondays, we do... Um, level four study session. So Denver Guitar Orchestra set up with four levels. Level one, intro, intro, introduction to instrumental guitar playing. Okay, so in that level, you learn how to well, tune your guitar, hold your guitar, play chords one at a time, and play melody. Hey, Kathy, welcome in. Happy Monday to you. Uh, we And so that's level one. Tune your guitar, hold your guitar, pluck tablature, play chords. Okay, that's level one. Level two, um, continuing on tablature reading, we introduce arpeggio playing, we introduce chord melody playing, and we introduce switching from chord to chord. Level three, everything, there's just more work on that. It's just that the number of chords within a song changes a lot. So we started with two chord, one chord, then two chords, then lots of chords in level three, um, melody picking and continuing work on chord melody. And then level four, which is what this piece is, um, a studio in E minor is a new new arrangement that I did last year, I think, uh, for one of our guitar orchestra members. And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. And so we're going to walk through um, on, in the study session today on a Monday. Uh, we'll walk through all the chords, how, what's going on in the standard notation, and then we will study the tablature as well. Um, usually there's a melody line that I usually put onto these arrangements, and that usually kicks it into two, pages 2 and 3 and 12. Um, but this, the, the melody and the chord melody are the same thing on this song, so I didn't put on a separate melody line. So we can skip that for today. Um, in terms of those of you guys that are sitting here live, you can participate in chat if you want. Don't have to. Um, love it when you do. Um, I'm assuming Kathy would tell me if the if the sound is terrible. Uh, we've had pretty good luck with YouTube over the last few months. Um, I had one day where the sound was crackly, but for the most part, we've been doing okay. So let me know if their sound is weird. It is a live broadcast. We fill up. There's no editing ever done afterwards. I'm supposed to go in and cut off the beginnings and ends, but I don't ever get around to that so you get me uh full of mistakes and full of errors and uh, that's it's all that's what you see is what what poor what everybody here on the live session tuned in for and uh um our ultimate goal here is to get you playing what is popularly known as finger style guitar it is basically it is basically classical music using popular tunes I think is probably the way to think about it. Uh, we're going to learn a lot of right hand techniques. We're going to figure out how to make sure you run your left hand properly. And um, um, in this case, this is absolutely standard issue for classical music uh, in, in any guitar 
program, this is probably one that you would be introduced this piece. And uh, we're just happening to do it in a finger style arrangement. Uh, and when we talk about finger style, almost always including the tablature. Okay. In, in official school and academic guitar programs, they don't encourage the use of tablature. Um, thanks, Gabby. <laughs> she says, she can hear me just fine. I sound beautiful. I sound like Kermit the Frog, and I'm aware of that. Uh, and I'm not going to do anything about that. Um, in uh, classical guitar programs, uh, they, they tend to just push you away from tablature because they want you to be able to read standard notation. The challenge with that is, is that tablature, in many respects, is a superior system for fretted instruments than standard notation. Uh, and so that's why um, you see a lot of um, non-academic guitar players using tablature. I give you both systems. I figure whatever way you come to guitar is good and uh, getting better at both reading both of those systems. Both of them have some uh, helpful ideas to them, and that's why we'll talk about all that a little bit today. And then... Um, then the rest of the week, we have level three, level two, and level one. We just go down the, the thing. So you find your level where your playing is comfortable. For some of you, that's every day. The basics um, never hurts to go back and revisit the basics. And so that's level two, level one. And then on Thursday night at 8 o'clock, we have the one one song concert where we all get together and we're going to play the heck out of this one um, with players that uh, you know want, uh, the players who can't make it during the day they like to have a, a, at least once a week get together um, since we're not meeting personally we're meeting on youtube and calling it good and then on friday we play everything all at once so we not simultaneously but we play everything on friday uh to have one last shot at all of the songs of the week and then the following week we start all over on something new so that's the plan here at denver beautiful denver guitar orchestra um, i'm broadcasting live from the historic grant avenue theater uh, on south grant street in denver and i'm glad you're here kathy i'm really glad you're here Anybody else hiding up there in the in the widget? That's absolutely fine. You don't need to participate in, in conversation or whatever. Um, but if you do have questions, um, you can log into YouTube and then um, and then it allows you to do chat. And I think the chat box is probably over here for you guys. All right, let's go through it. Uh, a studio in E minor. Torrega was a guitar composer, well thought of and well known among guitar classical guitarists and uh, the photo of him has his uh, kind of crazy beard and uh, and uh, uh, probably who knows he's probably a lovely guy <laughs> with questionable facial hair decision making uh, arranged this a couple months ago I think August of last year or something like that mm -hmm. and just did a, a minor update to it uh, for today's discussion and uh, we'll talk about the couple of places that I made some adjustments. It's pretty darn close to exactly what Torrega wrote. And um, so I think uh, I just put more information on here. Um, uh, oh, Elizabeth is finally showing up because, you know, she, she just shows up whenever she wants. Elizabeth is a bit of a rebel and uh, she just does whatever she wants. Uh, glad you made it, Elizabeth. All right. First chord on the song this chord E minor okay one of the things you know about guitar there are a couple of moments there are a couple of things it does really well it for a small bodied relatively quiet instrument and by it's small body I mean compared to a piano or a harp or something for a relatively small instrument it just has tremendous sustain like I can hit that it's going to be a while even on this cheap guitar before that sound stops uh, so so we want to take advantage of that when we can uh, and this song is going to allow us to do that the other thing that um, this guitar does really well is E minor beautiful chord that is my favorite chord on, on this and you'll see in a lot of guitar playing that e minor shows up uh, with that sort of dark sad brooding tone about it it's really a lovely chord and something that uh, you want to get comfy with as you know in level one we teach e chord which is index middle and ring and that's a good chord too right just quite happy and then you take your middle finger off, or your index finger off and now you get e minor okay that's a sad <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that's sad. Okay. All right. Next chord, E minor or A minor. Sorry, is very typical when you are in music, uh, when you are studying uh, music theory, that uh, you would see an E minor and an A minor together. They hang out a lot together. They're pretty good friends. And the nice part about guitar is they knew that, right? And so it's tuned and set up in a way to make it easy to get from one to the other. All you're going to do is add your index finger on the second string, first fret, and drop these two down. You get that chord, okay? Try not to hit the E string on the top. Just go five down. Sounds dark and broody. And then your A note, your A string, uh, and an A minor chord is rooted. We call that rooting the bass note. Sounds beautiful, right? And if you hit the E string, it's not the end of the world. There is an E in the A minor chord, but we don't want to. And we got another E hanging out right here. Let's use that one instead. So there's your A minor chord. And then the hard chord in this song is B7. Okay. And if we were just going to strum this thing, we would need to put a bar here. Okay. And you don't really need to use this top string. So you don't need to run your bar all the way to the top. But if you feel like, mm, yeah, I want it. that's easier for me, that's fine. Drop your bar in there. And then you're going to do um, what amounts to an A7 chord. But you're going to move it up to the second fret. Is end up on four. Now it's a B7. So when you're thinking about chords and you're newer to guitar, um, or you've been around a while and you just hate bar chords, um, I like to think of them as this is an A7, but it's on the second fret. Now it's a B7. I think that that sort of takes some of the frustration out of um, bar chords in that, yeah, you're just playing in your regular chords in open position. But you're adding a bar. Okay, so there's your B7. Um, not probably without notice. If E is my main chord, and I count over to the four, E, F, G, A minor, and the next one would be B7. Okay, so it's just a one, four, five song. Absolutely traditional, straight up classical music theory. One, four, five. We're just using minor chords instead of major chords. Okay, so those are the first, those are the chords in the first half of this song. Very dark, very foreboding, very sad, um, and very, and, and so a lot of times the other way to think about minor chords is that they are um, important or depth, you know, you know, they have a lot of depth, they're really uh, complex, and so not necessarily a sad song here, but, but a complex or deep feeling song about it very important possibly that's the sounds we're going to be looking for notice when you get to the second part of the song from 9 through 16 we have a couple um we have a g chord sneaking into the mix okay so that's going to be this chord here one two three okay. and uh that's level one chord nothing particularly fancy about it um and if you think about your music theory B, F, G, hanging out on the third. So it's interesting. Um, in minor keys, that's not necessarily, uh, it's a lot of times that's either, I think it's a diminished chord, guys, I think. <laughs> Hold on, let me double check. Um, where's the key charts? Uh, if you're in E minor, da, 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 I got to double check my facts before I talk too much. E minor, yeah, your, your G, um, Augmented is on third, and he's putting in a G major here on the third. So not diminished, but augmented um, is usually found here. So, But he's using a regular G on that third. And, uh, you know, it's going to sound cool. Okay. Um, all right. So those are your main chords. If you were strumming and singing this chord, if it had lyric, you'd B to A minor to B7. Back to E minor. No. Da -da -dun -dun. Da -da -dun. Dum, da, 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 dum. So it has that nice phrasing to it. Um, and so we can see why he picked those chords. They work really well together. Okay, next thing. Those are all of your chords in the song. It doesn't particularly help to do full on chord positioning for all of these measures because we're going to be moving around a lot with the melody. 
Okay, next thing that you can see quite clearly, let's go down into the chords and lyrics lines. There are no lyrics to this song, so you just get the standard notation. You see on every single grouping, there's three, three, and three, right? So measure one, there's a trip, they call it a triplet, right? It has a little three over the top, and that means we play that's those three notes in the space of two, and um, they're squished together. Okay, and in this case, the song's in three, four. What you're really thinking about is this is one, two, three, one, two, three. But if with one, we're actually going to play all three notes one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. So it can feel very fast. That's why you want to dial down the speed on this one and take your time. Okay, the other thing that's very clear when you look at the tablature. Um, and really, truthfully, the standard notation as well is that these are going to be arpeggio patterns. There's an absolute pattern very consistently through there of hop, first string, second string, third string, first string, second string, third string, first string, second string, third string, all the way through the entire song. So um, without paying any attention to the bass notes, we would be thinking about O, 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 3, O, O, 3, O, O, 3, 1, 2. I got to get my left hand in the right positions, but my right hand, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's going to do only that through the entire song with two exceptions. Measure eight, we're going to play done, one, and we're going to try to, we may actually on measure eight, drop in our thumb to get uh, that rolling sound that's going to pick us back up to play either into measure one or on to measure nine. Um, so we'll have a little bit of a rolled chord there. Two ways to roll that chord will be the thumb down, or you can take these three fingers, which are hanging out on the, uh, every measure, and playing them quickly. Okay, that's rolling them down. You can also roll them up. Guessing Trega would have wanted index middle ring roll. That's what I'm guessing he would have done. Um, he probably would have accepted this, maybe. Okay, definitely supposed to be a different type of chord feeling in major eight, and that also shows up in major sixteen. Um, and then I would say uh, all we have to do now is go through. Let's just play those three strings. One, two, three. Uh, let's play through the whole thing. Look for where things are going to go sour for us. Okay. So measure one, not too rough. Zero, zero, zero. And then add the three. Do that twice. Measure two. It's really going to feel like a D7 with your finger, ring finger up here on three. Okay. So that's really what I'm going to do there. And then pull my ring finger back to get the two. Do that twice. Here's where things get a little messy. You got five, four, two. So probably pinky on five, ring finger on four, index finger on two. Now, because I'm also going to have to get this two when we get down to the actual playing of this, I'm probably just going to put a bar on two. Okay? And that makes sense, right? If, you, if the chord is B7, right here, this is what your chord looks like. But you're not going to play the, this string. Let's use that where your pinky is and then put your pinky where the melody note needs to be. And so that's probably the shape I'm going to attack this with. Okay, it's going to go five, four, two. And then three, four, two. So I'm going to put my middle finger down. It's not doing anything anyway and lift up my pinky. And then lift my middle finger up to get the two sort of dark, weird, tension-filled moment is going to need to be resolved by a new E minor, and it sure enough, it is. Go to your seven, and now you have these uh, pretty easy two measures here. Seven, seven, then go to the zero. Three, three, and then we're going to go right back to the same idea um, that we have already played. Measure six is identical to measure two. And then that same 
exact measure shows up again in measure seven, which showed up in measure three. And then we got a zero in measure eight. Okay. And I, I do think we want to do index middle ring. Nah, roll it. Nah, just like that. That takes some practice, and I'm not even that good at it, right? It's, a, it's something that all classical players get pretty good at that. Okay? Rolling it with your claw shape, but you could also drop down your thumb either way. Um, now, notice that's um, a quarter note and a half note. So that quarter note and then a half note after you bring that out, you got plenty of time to get back up to the top of the song and start over, okay? So let's, let's pretend, let's play that last chord and then go right into our just, um, measure one. When it, ready, play. what we're going for easy to talk about surprisingly challenging to do so the 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 uh the e minor measures are pretty easy to play the a minor measures quite a bit harder and the b7 measures really pretty challenging okay. bar ring and pinky not at all comfortable but that's what we're looking for So that's what we're after. Okay. Second time you come around, you play that little chord there at the end of measure eight. Now we move on to measure nine. Okay. First measure, not too bad. Again, the E minor it makes it relatively easy to get along with. Let's play those. I'm sorry, zeros to start with. Go. Three, seven, eight, nine. Now, when your pinky is hanging out on seven, your bar is going to go down on five. Okay, so seven. Okay, so while you're, I'm probably gonna play this seven with my pinky, but I might play it with my ring uh, it, so that I would have my pinky available for eight. So I would think that through, what's easier for you? Okay, so we start at measure nine, O, oh, three, seven, Bar seven, five, eight. So make a choice. Am I going to do a seven with a bar and then slide my pinky up? Or am I going to do a ring at the bar, drop my pinky onto eight? I'd say probably in classical music, they would probably say for sure use your ring finger here because you know you've got your eight and you know you got your bar. That's actually a first position type arrangement. Heck yeah, do that. But I think the downside of that is that is it this is really quite convenient too. And there's just a, a little less stuff going on with your fingers. So either one of those I think is completely acceptable. Um, once you get your 855 in, then you're gonna race down and grab a D7. Three. I think is the hard move moment in this song is going to the five three five, so you're probably going to do three and two fives. Okay, so five three five, and then lose these other two fingers for the five zero zero. Three seven, okay, and then we're going to start the main idea again. Go back to the opens and measure thirteen. darn hard part okay 
right? So the big differences here are at measure 10, we didn't see that in the first section, and then at measure um, 15, we do see that in the first section, right? So you really only have that section there in measure 10 and measure 11 that are a little bit different. Other than that, it's the G chord and the E minor chord are basically feeling the same from a finger picking standpoint. Okay, so let's go through and just play that. Then we're going to talk about adding in the bass notes and then we'll talk about those harmonics there at the end. Okay, so just without without the bass notes yet, just all the way through as written, do the repeats. Good, good practice for us. Nice and slow from the top. Oh, 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 three, oh, oh, three, oh, oh, three, one, two, two, one, two, two, one. Two, five, four, two, four, two, 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 seven, 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 oh, three, three, uh, two, three, one, two, two, one, two, 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 five, four, two, three, four, two. Two, four, two, O oh. chord to the top. O oh. three, 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 one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, five, four, two, three, four, two, two, four, two, seven, O oh. O oh. seven, O oh. O oh. seven. Oh, three, 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 one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, five, four, two, three, four, two, two, four, two, oh, chord, keep going, oh, three, seven, bar, Five, eight, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, I blew it, three, sorry, five, three, five, five, oh, oh, three, oh, oh, seven, oh, three, 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 one, two, two, one. That's the basics. That's the that's the structure on which we now build the house. Okay, so we've got the foundation laid. That's the basic idea. Getting this where we don't have to think about this very much, where we're just doing this as a matter of rote. Um, uh, for me, the hard part is that bar five and four. I think that. So that's the part I'm going to put some time in on, and maybe that's hard for you. Maybe that's nothing for you. So I got to get that where I can do that in my sleep. Uh, the other place I was obviously struggling, that last one on measure 11, and we're hanging out in this D7 shape. Three. And then I got to get all the way up to that in order to get then rest. So that's a moment that's going to take me a little bit of work. So I know my two places that I get to work on. Okay, next thing, I hope I just showed you my knee. I have shorts on today. It's 90 degrees. <laughs> All right, uh, 
next issue in the song, we'll be getting our bass note together. So I would, what I like to do is I like to just go through and read my bass notes just to see where they're, what they're going to be. Okay, so measure one, zero, two, three, A chord, two, three, B, two, three, E, two, three, E, two, three. A two three D two three I'm sorry B two three E two three repeat B two three A two three B two three E two three D two three A two three B two three A go on two three measure nine E two three a two three D two three G two three E two three A two three two two three E. Let's do it one more time from nine O two three O two three O two three G two three O two three O two three B, two, three, O, two, three. Okay, so we got to get those in at the same time that this is going on. So that's where that's where things start to get pretty, pretty interesting. Very classical feeling where we're going to be doing. Okay? As we know, in every case, our first note is going to be with our ring finger. So in, those two guys are going to be working together as a team making sure our thumb is on the right string and then plucking at the same time with the ring finger. Okay? So if we start from the top and go crazy slow in the beginning, guys, to give yourself a shot, play them both open. Oh, I should have had a zero on, sorry. From the beginning, together. Three. Three. Second. Fifth string and a three here. Here's where that full bar is important. And then open on the sixth string, and this is on seven. All opens. Three. Whoops. Second, fifth string. Bar chord, pinky on five. And then and then we're gonna finish up with the opens on top and bottom. And Elizabeth sent me notes. She says, "Are these these are all going to be open open strums, right? Or in other words, we're not stopping the sound ever. Um, we're just pulling them out to get that nice long feeling of the string. And he, absolutely, right? So we're not going down and trying to stop anything from ringing. We want everything to be ringing the whole entire time. And um, and you can even see that in the standard notation arrangement where you've got all of these." Bing, 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 bing with these three strings and then um, a dotted half note with your thumb just to let those things ring as long as they possibly can. Let's go into measure nine and practice that because we did that. This gets kind of tough there in measures 11 and 12. So let's let's just practice this super slow from together. Dun, two, three, and then grab your three. Seven. Fifth string, seven, and a bar. And this is where things get a little wonky. You're going to go grab this D7, and you're going to grab um, the D string. And it feels like it should be a D7 measure, but it's not. It's an A minor measure, which makes it very fascinating, right? And then this is 
to get here quickly, three fives. And you want to try to do that without letting that D, without touching the D string so it continues to ring through that whole process. Easy to talk about, hard to do. Let's try it one more time from measure 11. One, two, three. You're going to go grab got your in probably your ring finger on five so you've got to try to get a g chord in not going to work right so you're really only going to grab this this string here with your index finger lead you to believe that you might want to be thinking about this chord with your pinky here <laughs> instead of your ring finger so that you can more conveniently get to this but for me that doesn't make any sense index finger on three, these two here, and then when it comes time to get that three, I'm just going to have to stretch. Now, theoretically, you, your three stays down the entire time, and then look at that stretch. If you're an advanced player, heck yeah, that's what you're going to do. Most of us, you can just abandon this to go up here and get the seven. The guitar will have slow, stopped ringing enough where you don't have to keep that down. But the but the sheet music says you're going to keep this guy down through that whole measure, even though you have to get up to the seven. It is possible. It's not necessarily easy, right? Um, and so let's play through measures 11 and 12 one more time. One, two, three. Hopefully you're done through the, the, the worst of it. Let's go to 13, opens on top and bottom. Three, three again. Fifth string. Bar chord, five, four. So I missed my two there. Bar chord was on the two. Opens on top and bottom. That's how we want to play it. And that gives us all of the pieces and parts except for one last thing. Okay, And this is something you want to practice because this is going to be in all finger style and in all classical music. It seems like they just these show up a lot more than they probably should. But it's sort of the darling child of guitarists, the harmonics. Okay, Something we get to do on this instrument that they don't get to do on most of the other instruments. To pull off a successful harmonic, you got to find your 12th fret. Okay, And not the fret where we usually press, but the actual metal bar in front of 12. By front, I mean down here. So uh, fret Wire one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's your fret wire number twelve. That's where you're going to be at. Your guitar will either have the fret wire number twelve. It will either be right where the the body is, or it will be two back if you have fourteen frets to the body, which is kind of a common um, con arrangement for a lot of guitars. So you'll either be on 12 or you will for sure be on 12. 12 will either be right at the body or it will be two frets back from the body. Okay. And if you hold very lightly over those three strings at the bar, you get that sound. So instead of that sound, we, we, we lightly, very lightly touch right above 12. And you get that sound. And you're going to hear that on a lot of guitars. Okay, Every style of guitar loves those. Okay, um, You should know they're also hanging out on 7 and 5. Okay, You can also create artificial harmonics. Let's say I want to fret it at 2. That means I've now moved, instead of at 12, I've now moved it down 2. And there's going to be a harmonic right here. Okay, And those are called artificial harmonics. Artificial harmonics require a special technique where you use whatever finger you're going to use to, to stop the string, and then you use your thumb to pluck it. Well, some people will use their middle finger. 
we need to plug it as well. And so just by fretting it and then picking at it wherever the fret tells you to. So if I have fretted down two, I got to move two down. I get a fret. If I move down four, if I'm fretting at four, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, and that's where my harmonic is going to show up. Okay. So that's that's those are called artificial harmonics, and you'll see a lot of um, uh, you'll see a lot of guitars working on those those harmonics, and it sounds beautiful. It's kind of fun. Elizabeth's question is important. Let's say we're getting ready to do on this song. It says harmonics on the last time, and we put our little finger there, and we're going to do our pluck it like this. Once you pluck it, you can let off this finger, and the harmonics will continue. Okay. Be careful. You don't want, if your finger, like it's 90 degrees here today, my fingers are tending to stick to the strings a little bit. Um, you can, when you pull it off, you can tend to get this plonk. I can't do it now that I've talked about it. But um, And Elizabeth's question, can I just strum it? Heck yeah, right? That sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Could you do the whole entire 12th fret? Yeah. The problem with doing all of the strings is you've, uh, you've lost the E minor here, okay? And so it's not really an E minor if you do them all. But you can certainly do the bottom three as a strum, and they sound great. Okay, so that's your E minor harmonics on 12. Okay. Um, and if you want to do all 12, nobody's going to arrest you. <laughs> All right, so that's the last piece. And I think when her, her, uh, Terega wrote this, he wrote harmonics at that place and then did the repeat. So when you hear it on um, people performing this, it's pretty normal to hear them do the harmonics twice. So they'll come down, hit the harmonics, and go back and do their repeat. I think that it makes more sense just to do it once at the very end. And just, I don't know, I... I I like harmonics, but I, I think they get overused in, in in guitar quite a bit. And I don't think, I think you want, that sends the message to your audience. I'm done. Right? I think if you do that, whoops, and then you got more song to play, it feels like you gave them false information to me. And so I like to just have you do the harmonics on the last time through at that point. And um, because you are coming into the station at the end of the song, it's okay to slow that down to... Right, and just be, be a little lazy about getting to that last harmonics. Let your audience kind of wait with bated breath for that very final moment of the song. Um, so that's a rock star level song. I love this piece and I hope that you love it. And I think, um, like I say, work it in pieces, get your right, get your, get your arpeggio picking down first, then go through and get your thumb in, then start working them together and then start thinking about how am I going to accomplish those little strums? See, they're an eight and 12. And then obviously, you know, getting your harmonics together where they sound pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice. A lot of music in one page, and also very, very classical in the sense um, it, it's a Romantic era piece, but it's very, play the first part, play the first part again. Play the second part, play the second part again. They, it's the end of the second part is a whole lot like the beginning of the first part. You know, it's very, very typical of guitar arrangements of the period. And so I think, you know, you've got a really nice piece of music uh, fits on one page and you really make you sound like you know what you're doing, uh, even not necessarily when you don't. So so that's it. That's Estudio in E minor by Francisco Tarrega. I think the little accent over the A means that we, we put a little ah uh, instead of uh into it. Because we, I think as Americans, we say Tarrega. And I think they, they would pronounce it as Tarrega. So I think that's what that accent's all about. Um, Kathy, I agree. It's a very cool piece. So go go learn it. <laughs> um, we will play this piece Thursday night, 8 p.m. here on YouTube, uh, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, if you're wandering around the universe in some other time zone. And um, um, in order to come join, you just send me an email. And I only send the link out to the people with the email. I put this piece of music up on the website so anybody can get a hold of it. Um, but you'll get an email um, if you um, if you want to come to the Thursday night gathering. Just send me an email, and I will send you the link when on Thursday night. So um, 
thank you guys for being here. Kathy and Elizabeth, thanks for being in chat. I do love this one too. I just adore it. And um, Dan and our orchestra brought up to my attention that we should play that one. And he is right. I think he went ahead and memorized it as part of his repertoire now. It's that good of a song. And uh, so, so there you go. And uh, if you're hanging out up here and didn't log in or didn't want to chat, just know I love you too. I'm glad you were here. Hopefully this made some sense. Um, and th th there's this is there's no limit to the number of tutorials on this song that other guitar teachers have done on YouTube. So if, if whatever I said doesn't make any sense, go check out some of theirs. Uh, it is, you know, the, the sheet music is fairly standard and the, the little bit of differences between the two, you can decide whether you want to do them or not. But uh, hopefully I gave you enough to get you started and get you get you through this one good one to memorize too right all right <laughs> uh, uh, all right a little bit of, a little bit of serious stuff for our usual goofy finger style stuff we do and i hope you guys have a wonderful day um i know they're opening up the universe uh, but don't believe them that bug's still out there trying to get you so stay home and play guitar have a wonderful day you guys thanks for everything i will see you soon arlo you said you were having issues with the hotel Harry version for acoustic guitar for guitars. Thank you, Arlo. Um, I am taking no further information on Hotel California. It, the the arrangement and I are in a death bat death battle to the end. When I'm done, is going to be good. It's really good. I just that intro, the outro, and the last little section of it is just eating me eating me up. And I'm going to win. So I've got I got everything I need, Arlo. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if I could use four guitars, it would have been a whole lot easier. So a uh, problem with Hotel California is, is an E minor song, but then they keep on it at seven to put it in B minor. So freaking Eric Fry, Eric Fry, is that what the singer uh, could sing it? And uh, and uh, so I want to keep it in B minor, but I want it in open position. And so it's uh, it's been brutal. It's just fought me every single step of the way. And I've been working on it for a while. So it's almost done. Thank you, Arlo. No, I don't want any more additional information on it. And yeah, you know, the nice part is that if you can get four guitar players together, you don't have to work near as hard. And so that that's uh, what we all should work on is getting three friends who know how to play guitar that's all that's what you need and then you then you're in good shape or like i did here in denver i found uh, 18 people who are really good at playing guitar probably most of them better than me and uh we uh we have we, we have a good time so all right guys have a wonderful week and uh if i don't see you in any of the daily broadcasts i will see you thursday night hopefully send me an email that you want in on this one this is a beautiful piece and really really going to improve your skills probably so uh, Don Felder. Oh, Don Felder is the guilty one. <laughs> Arlo knows too much about Hotel California. That's probably what's in the back of my head. Is that when I send out my arrangement, Arlo is going to be like, "Well, let me tell you." <laughs> yeah, he, you know, I think he probably hung out with the Eagles back in the seventies. He just doesn't remember. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, Arlo. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Kathy, and thanks for everybody hiding up here in the widget. You guys have a great day. <laughs>